Hello everyone and welcome to our virtual laboratory. I know it's been hard a couple of weeks for everyone and uh, we're going to start doing labs in this format. As you can see, I'm standing in front of the screen which you're familiar with and we're going to start our lab uh, in, in the same way as we usually do with an introduction and then I'm going to show you the actual procedure you would be doing which is described in your lab manual and then I will also provide you with values and numbers um, and other data so you can complete all the calculations. Uh, this uh, video is being filmed by, by my lovely daughter who is just like your college <laughs> student and who is now uh, at home uh, and I recruited her to help me record this. So we're going to talk today about gravimetric analysis for sulfate uh, it's a procedure that's an extension of what you did before break. Just a quick reminder, several weeks ago you uh, prepared this uh, copper carbonation compound called tetramine copper sulfate monohydrate and uh, you saved it in your vial. Before break we looked at copper content and we will be discussing uh, hopefully online uh, whether you were able to figure out mass percent of copper in this compound. So now we're shifting our attention to sulfate ion, SO4 to minus, and we want to know its mass percent in that purple compound. Eventually knowing mass percent copper and mass, of, uh, mass percent sulfate, we should be able to uh, use these data to figure out mass percent ammonia, assuming mass percent of water is given, and then using all mass percentages of each component, figure out uh, empirical formula of this compound and compare it to the theoretical one you see here. So um, the short overview of the procedure for today, first we're going to take known amount of this copper uh, ammonia sulfate substance, this purple compound. Uh, we're going to add some water. When we add water to an ionic compound like this, it breaks down into ions. Ions include tetramine uh, copper ion and sulfate ion, which I underlined because it's the focus of our studies today, and water. Uh, we will then add some hydrochloric acid. Remember, ammonia is a base. So when we add acid, acid will neutralize ammonia, and so it will go from this purple color back to blue, freeing up uh, just copper ion and helping it completely dissolve the solid. Uh, the resulting solution containing sulfate ion, which is the main uh, point of interest for this experiment, we're not interested in copper anymore, so we're concentrating our attention on sulfate. We're going to take the solution, we're going to heat it until it boils gently, and then we're going to uh, add excess of barium chloride solution. Barium chloride solution contains barium ion, this right here is a net ionic equation of the reaction that occurs between barium ion from barium chloride and our sulfate, producing white precipitate of substance called barium sulfate. Basically the idea is only sulfate will react with barium and barium is added in excess so we can obtain uh, and measure the amount of this white uh, solid that's and tie it to the amount of sulfate that was originally present in our solution. And sulfate in our solution, of course, comes from our purple carbonation compound. Uh, of course, sulfate, again, is a limiting reactant because barium uh, chloride is added in excess. So today's procedure will include uh, precipitation of barium sulfate, um, well, dissolution of the substance, precipitation of barium sulfate, and then actually next week what you would be doing, it says today here, but it would actually be next week's lab, um, we would uh, filter barium sulfate using gravity filtration to be as accurate as we can, collecting every possible particle of the solid. 
so we can figure out exact mass of barium sulfate, and then we would use mass of barium sulfate to calculate moles and then moles of sulfate and then grams of sulfate. All of this I will discuss uh, in the next week's video. So today we're just going to go ahead and uh, start with our experimental procedure. Hope you're all doing well and uh, I will talk to you again very soon.